think the more exciting thing is the line recovery. Important because we have recovered all the signaling system and the train control uh, from uh, Cape Town to uh, Simonstown. We are able to run at uh, 20 minutes headways. Uh, we can go up to a maximum of two and a half minutes headways. If we're talking about 31 lines recovered of the 40, you're obviously going to need more trains. But when is the signaling going to fully come together? We have actually now concluded, uh, we have just closed the tender for the recovery of Western Cape okay. and will be actually finalizing the procurement space, meaning that all the five uh, corridors that uh, the main corridors that we we have in, in Western Cape will be fully recovered in 18 months. Okay. Then in Gauteng we also have five work packages that will run concurrently. They will also be concluded within 18 months period running concurrently. Um, then in West uh, in KZM we have uh, interim works that we're doing but in the main we do have a full re-signaling program that will provide a full signaling, telecommunication, uh, redundancy and also train control. So in the meantime we are not just folding our arms, we are looking at the quick wins uh, to recover the signaling systems where the vandalism has happened on small areas or small elements. We are able to recover quick and then be able to run trains uh, without uh, manual authorization. So that is the um, efforts that we've been doing and we have seen that they're actually giving us a very good fruits in terms of recovering the, the services. To give an example, in uh, Gauteng, we had uh, a corridor between Pretoria and Soulsville um, that was not connecting very well with the Mabopani corridor. We have recovered that under 10 months. Um, we, in, in KZN, we are working with the existing signaling system. We are recovering cables. We are able to run without a manual authorization. So that's an effort that we are actually amplifying our safety while we are busy now remodeling our, our full network in KZN. Okay. Similarly with uh, Western Cape, this particular corridor that we are now working on was fully recovered by the internal teams. It was not an external contractor that working but fully recovered by internal teams. So that means there's been some good skills development from, from internal, or how, how have you managed to develop the skills? So over the time, the uh, capital programs, we develop um, uh, training materials, but in the main, we do train and also help with the on-job training, which basically brings the practical part. Hence, you see the teams can be able to work on their own, However, when they need extra uh, requirements of uh, remaining resources, we externally source those requirements. However, internally the teams are capable, they are able to finalize the system to back into operations. Okay. Have you managed to deal you know, swiftly with the vandalism and, and the theft that you guys have been experiencing on your track? We have a number of improvements. Um, you know, as it's a moving target. Uh, we, we developed engineering solutions. However, you always one leg behind with the thieves. So, but what we have successfully done is to intensify the enclosures of what we call the elements on the points machines. So over and above the normal leads that we have that are lockable, we have ex added extra protection cover which it makes it harder for the thieves to actually steal. We have experienced um, attempts, but we can see it's becoming a successful solution. In Gauteng, we also now intensified what we call the Excel counter enclosures. So we have now added an engineering solution, like concretizing that to make sure that it's not tempered with. In the future, we are looking at the technology um, detection systems to help us to detect early, uh, early warnings so that we are able to react. And we will achieve that through deploying our na national digital radio network, which will be uh, 4G based. We are able to do what uh, IoT, Internet of Things. We are able to add more connected um, systems so that we can feed back to our control rooms. We are able to monitor that. So with the changes coming in on the GSM, you know, the the signaling changes and, and FMRC as opposed to GSMR, where are you guys at? Okay, we actually uh, we have procured the services 
uh, with a consortium to upgrade our um, uh, GSMR system from 2G generation technology to a 4G technology. Our, in, our vision is to go to 5G through 4G. Okay. So we are progressing in that manner because in the globally, that is now the new uh, migration plan to transit from a 2G which will no longer be serviced and will actually the technology will be obsolete. So I think process are ahead and we are now in the mix of this ma major change. So we are progressing very well. We are uh, basically now restoring the GSMR first as our first phase and we are creating a redundancy using a 4G technology. When that 4G technology has now been coupled with GSMR, we will upgrade everything to 4G. Then the last part after 2030, surely we will then migrate swiftly to 5G because it will be more like a software upgrade. But the equipment that we are putting, it's 4G, 5G compatible. You were talking about uh, two and a half minutes headways. Okay, so that's safe, reliable, predictable. Do you have enough rolling stock for that? We do have enough rolling stock, um, even though the strategy is to mobilize the new trains. We do have the yellow and grey trains that are being fully uh, overhauled. They can run on these systems. However, the strategy of process to make sure that we push more the new trains because they will be now adapting into the new train control systems. While we have a mixed fleet, we are producing more trains. We are sitting at 200, over 200 manufactured trains and every day we are producing trains. So surely we are ramping up, looking at the demand and our vision in terms of increasing the numbers.